I wonder, like, what kind of advice would you give to an aspiring author? Because, I mean, just there are so many good books out there that I feel like sometimes it can be a little bit disheartening or uh, a daunting process to even get started. And I know a lot of people that get you know, all these ideas in their head, but they just can't put it to paper. But yeah, is there any kind of uh, advice that you would give to them to keep going or, you know, what they could do? Uh, so, the, so the first big thing really is, you know, write your story down. Um, there's no sense at sticking it floating around your head. And we, you know, we meet people all the time when we're out talking to people about, oh, I've, I've got the story that I've always wanted to write. Well, then just write it, you know, and even if it's a couple of pages here and there, it doesn't, and it takes you two years or three years to do, it's much better to get it down than it is to have it floating around in your head. Um, and then don't expect the first draft to be perfect. So uh, the, ho the whole point of writing it down initially is just to get the story down on paper and then you work at getting it perfect after then. So don't don't stress about it as you're going um, or else you'll never finish. Uh, and then just find someone that you trust that can give you some honest, constructive feedback. So you don't want to give it to someone who's just going to go, wow, this is the best thing ever written um, because they just want to you know they don't want to hurt your feelings um and then likewise you don't want to give it to someone who goes this is an absolute rubbish because everyone's opinion is slightly different so give it to someone who'll go you look this was good but you know i didn't understand this part of the story or i think this part of the story would work better somewhere else or so just that gives you the the ability to to work at it and make it better is really key uh, and then once you've done that, you know, then start looking at how are you going to get it published, whether it's to a publisher or, or do it yourself. Um, but ultimately, you know, it's one of those professions that's that there's no um, expiry date to being a writer. So a lot of New Zealand writers, well-known writers are in their 70s and 80s and still writing. So it's not something that, you know, if you don't pick it up by the age of 40, you're never going to do it. Um, so certainly there shouldn't be any stumbling blocks from that sort of thing. So just, if you want to do it, just, just do it. Start. That's what, that's always what it takes. The first step is always the hardest one, but it's crucial. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. so, so you, you just mentioned before, like whether you go to a publisher or you self publish, you've had a lot of experience with self publishing. Like what do you, what are the most positive things that you've kind of experienced? Uh, with the self-publishing journey yeah i mean it's it's tricky to compare because i never went down the traditional publishing route and i and that was a conscious decision for me right from the start so and that was really uh because i didn't want to i'd, I'd spent over a year on this manuscript and i didn't want to leave its future in the hands of other people so there are some great positives to going to, down the traditional publishing route but a lot of time also what you do is you send your manuscript off and it sits on a reading pile for someone and then they might like it or they might after six months go no we're not interested and then you start the whole process again so i i didn't want to kind of put the outcome of that into other people's hands i wanted to really have more control over that and i think that's what self-publishing really gives you is that control over every aspect um so you get to to work with the editors yourself you get to do the the um cover yourself and then you get to work with you know public um printers like your books who who can kind of bring that all together and and help you produce the the um the paperback or whatever version that you're going to do i mean it's a lot more work because you are doing everything yourself and then marketing you have to do yourself and things like that but if 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 control is important then um i found it a much better way to go through things because you know i know people that have done sort of the hybrid model where they've they've it's um gone to a traditional publisher but there's sort of been a more collaborative approach and again you do get that it, it's great and it gets lots of publicity and everyone's um excited about it and then they move on to their next book and you're kind of still sitting there uh, whereas you can kind of maintain that enthusiasm if you're doing it yourself so um, i think that for, for me there's yeah, it would be difficult to go 
the other way necessarily well now that i've done it this way but i mean it's certainly not something that i wouldn't look at in the future but i think having that control for me is was really important yeah definitely i mean you work so hard on these manuscripts like from the conception to the final product you want it to be something that you really stand behind and that you're really proud of so having that control is really important um actually speaking on that do you have any kind of future projects or plans in the works for any other books coming up yep so i'm working on a a, a book at the moment with a completely new character in it um so it is a murder mystery it's a little bit more of a slow burning murder mystery so um I, i'm sort of early days in the first draft of that at the moment um so all, all going well i'll get that um that first draft done in the next two to three months and then sort of look at where that's going but going back to what i said before for me it's really it's really important to kind of keep myself interested as well and that's why i'm always looking for new characters or new settings to to put my characters in um so you're not just kind of churning out the same thing so i'm um this new book is set in the same world as some of my other books so there's a little bit of a crossover with characters but the main character is a completely new new type of character for me so um it's yeah, i'm finding it's quite exciting to write so far oh, very exciting um the same world like are, are they also local to to wellington and new zealand as well yeah yep so set in wellington um has a little bit of a crossover with alice from the silver moon retirement village um but uh this one yeah this character is a, a little bit younger than alice by about 60 years um and uh you know he, has a has a family has a completely different sort of private life to to some of the other characters that i've written so uh, make, makes her a little bit more interesting so st still a, a woman i tend to write woman characters more than male characters and the main reason for that really is the audience so cozy mystery uh novels tend to skew towards um female readers more than male readers and um and so they like reading female characters uh mm -hmm. so and i enjoy writing them as well um but yeah it, that's probably more of a commercial um reason than than any other to to um tap into the audience mm -hmm. Well, it makes sense. So at least, yeah, we do have that. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, where can readers, you know, buy your books as well? Like you have um, links and, and, and also social media as well where they can find you. Um, yeah, do you mind telling us a little bit about where we can find you and your books? Sure. So uh, I've got a website, which is um, rodneystrongauthor.com. Uh, where all my books are for people to read a little bit more about them. Uh, internationally, people can buy all my books off Amazon, at, uh, very, either through ebook or paperback. Um, also, one of my books is an audiobook, so I've sort of dipped my toes into the audiobook world uh, and mm. will prob probably look to add others to that a little bit later. But yeah, so so um, Poker Chips and Poison, which is the first Silver Moon Retirement Village book, is, is an audiobook as well. Uh, in New Zealand, um, I'm selling all my books through the underground bookstore. So that's uh, the, the underground bookstore dot NZ, uh, yeah. which we'll, is we'll part the of, part of the... Well. Yeah. So uh, all, all the paperbacks are available on, via that. Um, and then, uh, or yeah, directly from my, from myself. So we, uh, there's a, a um, collection of Wellington based authors that go around to local markets that uh, and we sell directly to readers so via the underground bookstore.nz website talks about the markets that we're at where people can come and um, you know either I'll be there or one of the other authors will be there but either way uh, my books will be available to sell uh, to buy through there as well nice cool and a nice uh, opportunity to meet the author too that's very cool yeah Yep. No, it's a really, it's really interesting. I think people get really surprised when, when they bowl up to the stand and, and realize that the author is actually standing behind the table. That's really cool. Um, so actually, if you, I know you're busy writing and everything right now, but if you are reading anything, what are you reading right now? I'm reading a book by um, Harlan Coben, who's a um, 
thriller writer from the US um, who um, I, I've read a few of his in the past and it is, uh, it's a story about a man who gets framed for the murder of his son and then has to break out of prison because he realizes his son's still alive so I'm I'm halfway through that I do tend to read probably more kind of thrillers uh, a little bit faster pace than what I actually write um, but that's uh, I've got that on the go and I'm also reading partway through a Kerry Greenwood who's an Australian author who um, one of her main characters is, is Phryne Fisher um, so she had a TV series uh, about her a couple of series um, in, in Australia and she's got a number of books in the series so kind of got two books on the on the go depending on my frame of mind at the time Oh, wow, that's um, some dedication and extra brain power. I admire that for sure. Um, cool. So also, you very kindly uh, agreed to um, give us one of your books to pass on to one of your readers if they like and share this post. So thank you very much for that. Um, I'm sure that there'll be a lot of people who are very eagerly trying to get this copy of this book because it is very good. Um, and yeah, I just want to, I want to thank you for coming and, um, you know, joining me in this interview. It's been absolutely amazing to chat to you. Um, you're very knowledgeable. I, uh, and, and I just think that people are going to get a lot of, um, good insight, um, when looking at this interview. So thank you very much for your time today, Rodney. Oh, thanks. Thanks for your time as well. It's been, been a pleasure. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.